I've been having bear problems. Everything from bears tipping over my feeders to just plain out destroying my trail camera. And although I literally love bears, at this point, they're kind of just becoming a pest and a problem. And so I had an idea. Since bears aren't scared of me in literally any way possible, what if I could run them off by letting them scare themselves? And this is when we commenced Operation Scare Bear Away with a Mirror by Seeing Itself and Forever Run Away. The operation name's a little long, but I think it'll work. I want to know, what is a black bear going to do when it actually sees itself? Now, of course, we know that sometimes these black bears run together. But what if they see another bear right in front of them when they're not expecting it. Well, that's hopefully what this mirror is going to be simulating. So after putting some Big and J feet out in front of the mirror and setting up trail cameras all around, it's just time to sit back, wait, and let the bears do what the bears are going to do. And a couple days later, we had an animal hit the feed, except not the feed in front of the mirror, but my stockpile of feed back at my house. Take a look at that, and you tell me what you think that might have been. Now, I'm not sure what it is, but one thing's for sure, it's not supposed to be here, and it's not supposed to be eating the feed. So I set up a trail camera in hopes to find out exactly what this mystery critter is so that we can take care of him one way or another. All right, guys, it is the next day, and uh, we should have some pretty good footage. Check it out. Whatever's happened has happened. They see right here busted open another bag, either overnight, yesterday evening, or this morning. I have no idea. But we're coming in here to the KG trail camera, and we're going to find out. One of the best parts about the KG trail camera is that you don't have to take it inside to check the footage. You can actually pop it open, turn it on, and review the footage right here on this built-in LCD screen. So let's do just that. Replay, almost 400 pictures. Boys, let's get to work. Is this our perpetrator? A chicken? Well, I'll say this. Proven innocent until guilty. Here's our first nighttime video. Uh oh, what is that? It's a stinking cat, dude. I'll tell you right now, guys, I ain't got no cats. That ain't my cat. And by golly, hey, right there's a stinking guard dog that ain't doing nothing. Steve, you gotta do a better job of patrolling, man. You're about 15 minutes too late, you know what I mean? There we got a stinking possum. A stinking possum right here, dude. Ain't supposed to be a possum right here. Let's check the next video. Oh my goodness. We found him in the act. We found him in the act. We found the perpetrator. What is it? Look at that. Caught him in the act. Can you see? Yeah. It's a possum. That's wild. So now that we know it's a possum, we're just gonna set up a live trap right here, bait it up with some dog food, and we're just gonna hope that he chooses the dog food over the deer feed. At that point, it's kinda gonna be a toss up. What we got? Mm-hmm. Okay. So some people at my church were trying to trap a groundhog that was messing up under their house, but instead they accidentally caught a skunk. And that's when they called me to figure out the rest. Now our objective is simple. Take care of it. And that's not really that simple because there's a few different options we could do. Long story short, we got a GoPro here. If everything goes good, I'm pretty sure it's in a cage trap like this. We might just let the skunk go. I don't think it's causing too big of problems. But worst case scenario, I am going to be taking the 22 just in case something crazy happens. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention we had a secondary objective not only take care of it but preferably take care of it without spraying if we can do those two we win and also mention that it was under their porch which means we're close to houses so a skunk that sprays would be very bad it would be even worse if it sprays in my face but the rifle of choice just a 22 suppress and we got subsonics so it should be quiet hopefully won't roll up any neighbors and hopefully if we hit him just right if we need to shoot him he won't spray but i'll go ahead and say this my objective is to get him out without even having to shoot him and i don't think that'll be too impossible but just in case i'm gonna go ahead and load up a mag all right here we go i guess we're gonna get a good little taste of what it's like to be a little exterminator okay you want KG's critter getter? 1-800-CRITTER. Call now. Don't actually call. I don't know whose phone number that is. What do you think, Abram? You know anything about skunks? You think we won't be able to get it done? No. Nope. You don't? Mm -hmm. You really don't? No. Well, it's going to be really bad. My plan is to literally just walk up to the cage and let it out. So if we can't get this done without it spraying, that means I'm going to smell like skunk essence, which is what skunk juice is called. Long story short, no matter what route we take, if this thing sprays, we lose. If it sprays, the ultimate objective is failed. If we get it out alive and it doesn't spray, that's our main objective. I think I can do it. That does mean I have to get within inches of the skunk and somehow convince it not to spray me, but I think I can do it. First, we gotta check out the situation, what it actually looks like. That'll tell us a lot. And the body language of the skunk itself. 
that's going to be really important. All right, we're on the scene. I'm going to flash y'all real quick. Boom, boom, boom. So we're not like in a hardcore subdivision, but we do have houses and they will definitely smell it. Big objective, don't make them spray. Now we're just looking for the trap to see what we got to do to work with it. Oh, there it is. Right there is the objective. It's a really basic cage trap. It's a skunk. You can see that it's waking up right now. I've done it before. I think I can probably do it again. What are your thoughts now, Abram? It's right up against the door, so it's going to know I'm there. Right. It's already looking at us. It's already looking at us? It's active now. He knows we're here. He doesn't, you know, reading his body language, he doesn't seem like he's insanely afraid. Another random fun fact to consider. He does live in a neighborhood, so he shouldn't be unbelievably scared of humans. What you got to remember with skunks, though, yes, they can spray, but... It takes them a couple weeks to regain all their spray once they use it. So, if he sprays at everything that moves, he's going to be in danger. So, if he sprays, it better be worth it because he's in a, he's in bad shape for the next two weeks. Because if he sprays me and I'm not a threat and a coyote comes, he can't spray the coyote. It's just something to think about. And that's also something they have to think about. They got to weigh their odds. Every time he sprays for the next two weeks, he's vulnerable. So... He's got to be real careful at what he sprays at. I think we can do it, but we're going back up and make a new game plan. I don't think we need to shoot it. Not at all. I don't think so. That's worst case scenario. Skunks are like, got to be one of the wildest animals. Why? Because they just store extremely potent smells in their butt. Yeah. And just spray things at will. Yeah. Like That's, what other animal, how many other animals like spray stuff? That's a really weird thing. Here, oh, here's a super fun fact. Do you know what one of their only natural predators are that actually targets skunks? Of course a coyote would probably take one, but coyotes also know the risk. Coyotes have one of the most powerful noses in the animal world. But you know what doesn't care about smell and actually targets skunks? Birds. Birds. Hawks, owls, eagles, big birds like that, they don't have a sense of smell. So if they get sprayed, they don't even know the difference. So yeah, that's one of the only actual predators skunks have. But now, it's time to get the game plan. Here's what we're gonna need, right here. Ready? Got it? Nothing. I'm just gonna go in there and do it. Shouldn't be too crazy. I think I can probably just let it out pretty easy. You want me to just go ahead and do it, or? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, that'll work. All right, the story just got spicier. They don't know if they want me to release it here or haul it off. Hauling it off would make it a lot more difficult. And I didn't plan on that one either. But we're gonna stand by and wait for what, see what they say. Let it go, easy. Haul it off. Possibly. Impossible. I've seen it done, not in person. Dude, that's gonna be tough. That's gonna be tough. Let's go look at him. The more that we can watch him, the more we can read his uh, physical behavior. Whatever you call that. What do you call it? Body language? Body language, that's the word. Yeah, dude, he's just chilling. He's just chilling. At the end of the day, a skunk is kind of just like a possum with uh, really stinky farts. They're not really that much different. I'll even test a little bit and get closer and read his body language a little bit more. I'm pretty close right here, and he's just chilling. He knows I'm not a threat. All right, we got Boone on scene. Can you tell us what's happening right there? What's our situation? We're trying to get a, a skunk out of this cage. That's right. Yeah. What's worst case scenario? You could get sprayed. Yeah, that's pretty bad. All right, so you ready? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'll do it. Open it up for him. We'll get this situation. And then we'll just do this. And... And now we just wait for him to make the next move. All right, his tail's up. We'll give him space. And there he goes, under the porch. <laughs> He's out. He's out of the trap. If he turns out to be a problem, we'll catch him again, and then we'll figure out how to get him out. I don't know about you, but I would call that a mission success. That's crazy. We spotted the bear. That's the first time. That is the first time we spotted the bear in person. Having just spotted the black bear in the same area as the mirror, figured it'd be a good time to go ahead and pull the trail cameras and give them a good old check. And the first video we got seems to be a really nice bachelor group of bucks right here, but they're standing right in front of the mirror and they really don't seem to care that much. Next, we got some turkeys chilling in the feed and same story, they're really not phased by the mirror. But then we get this doe and her reaction... Well, yeah, she's definitely pretty scared of the mirror. And this doe actually comes back a few times. And every single time she comes to the mirror, she's equally as freaked out and super suspicious of it. Then we got a raccoon, which really doesn't care. Some more turkeys. And then that doe again. And here's where my thesis comes in. Animals that travel in groups like the herd of bucks and the turkeys really aren't that scared to see another animal because they've been traveling with them all day long. However, whenever a doe that's been alone comes in, 
the last thing she's expecting to see is another deer, and that's why when she does, she's extremely freaked out. But, as we notice, we didn't get a bear on trail camera, so I decided to move the cameras and move the mirror. Guys, check this out. I'm literally over here setting up this feeder, putting up the mirror, and look what just walks up on me. Doesn't even care I'm here. This isn't bear related, but bro, check it out. There's a buck right there. He looks like an eight-pointer, and honestly, he's not even scared of me. It'll be pretty cool to see what he does if he sees himself. I don't know if he'll freak out or just think it's one of his brothers. I don't know. But yeah, as for the mirror right now, we're going to leave it. And pretty soon we'll come back, and I'll be honest, hopefully it's busted into pieces. I really hope a bear sees itself and goes crazy. But we'll just have to wait and see. There we go, baby. We got the possum on the first night. That means he's probably been here every single day. And here he is. Right there where we don't want him to be. We look close, we see that's the same possum that's been a little threat for the last few days. Now for the final trail cam check. Was the bear scared of itself? I don't know yet, but we're starting off with some dogs who actually, I guess, kind of enjoyed looking in the mirror. Oh, though, man, these dogs just come around. I don't even know, I don't even know where they come from. Then we got a raccoon right up close to the mirror. Doesn't seem to care at all. We got some deer here and there. Some of them can tell there's a mirror. Some of them can't, some of them just plain don't care. Then we got that dog again that this time just decided to pee on the trail camera. I don't really know how to feel about that. I, I don't really know, I don't know, I guess it's all right. But then we get the visitor that we've been waiting on, the big old black bear. So with that being said, did the bear scare itself off? Actually, it did, but not really for long because he came back the next night and tipped over the feeder again, just as if nothing ever happened. So the way it's looking, if I'm gonna scare off these bears, I'm gonna have to try something else. Click it over here if you wanna see a bear hunt in West Virginia where we actually use dogs, which might be the strategy we have to use on these bears, or over here for another bear hunt that's way out in the mountains of Idaho.